It's around 1992 and I'm round at a mate's house. I still have my Commodore 64 and haven't quite made the transition over to the Amiga, but I soon will. That month in fact. You see, he owns an Amiga, which he boots up and looks at me expectantly. Come on, I got this cool new game called Sensible Soccer. It really needs two players to be any good. Fancy a go? What was to become of me from that point forward, admittedly, was a life-changing event of pure captivation. From that point forward, it was my life's ultimate ambition to own a Commodore Amiga for myself. This is a true story. And now, let's look at why Sensible Soccer, Sensi to you and me, was, and probably still is, the best footy game ever made. Oh, and yeah, I probably got beat 7 or 8-0 that day. You see, it takes a while to master the controls for Sensible Soccer, but once you've mastered them, you become the master of this absolutely brilliant game. The basis for Sensible Soccer was Microprose Soccer. Released for home computers in 1988, it was designed by John Herr and programmed by Chris Yates, who adapted the gameplay format of arcade video game Tekken World Cup. While adding their own elements to create Microprose Soccer, Herr and Yates went on to use Microprose Soccer as the basis for Sensible Soccer in 1992, making further improvements to the gameplay. Sensi Soccer used a top-down perspective and simple ball mechanics to allow you to compete in the European Football League Championships. The football pitch is viewed from above and the players were tiny little sprites only 12 pixels high. The game was simple enough. You would take control of whichever player was nearest the ball and try and gain possession. Then you would race your player down the pitch and try and score as many goals as possible. The intelligence of the rest of your team was well programmed, so it wasn't just a case of you trying to keep the ball in one player's possession. If you passed down the pitch, you would always find another of your team ready to take control of. The joystick steered your character. Tapping on fire button would pass the ball and holding it down to shoot. You could even pull back the joystick after shooting to lift the ball even further, allowing for some truly excellent goals. Running toward an opponent and tackling could be livened up by hitting fire and performing sliding tackles that could direct the ball to a waiting teammate. But run too fast and the ball could slip out of your control. Unlike most games, the ball doesn't necessarily stick to your feet, so if you make a sharp turn whilst on the run with a ball in your possession, prepare for it to roll away from your player and probably either into the possession of your opponents or out of play. However, it was fantastically easy to get to grips with after playing a few times and made getting into the game extremely addictive once you mastered precisely what was needed to have a steady control of the ball. It's definitely a skill that's for sure. So, don't be expecting to be Lionel Messi after your first time playing. Oh joy of joys, this football game is a blooming pleasure to play. Not only is the on-screen action accessible, fast and playable, but the attention to detail is right on the mark. This even extends to the in-game sound. Small sprites, overhead pitch view, hundreds of teams and piles of options including tactics, weather variations and different competitions. Oh, and have I already mentioned, absolutely fantastic intuitive gameplay. I can't stress enough just how good this game is, so reiterating this now and again is vital. The single touch pixel perfect passing makes the creation of beautiful flowing moves easier than falling out of a kayak on the rapids and the scale of the graphics actually gives you a chance to use tactics, planning and skill. The constant and ever-changing crowd noise gives the game an atmosphere so close to the real thing that you'll find yourself completely immersed in it inside 60 seconds. If you hit the post, the crowd gasps. If you foul someone, they boo. And if you score, the crowd go ballistic. The goalkeepers are spot on too. 
they're computer controlled and very good. But, and here's the crucial bit, they're still fallible. In that every now and again, a speculative 40 yarder or a half hit daisy cutter will squirm out of their grasp or under their body. There's no simple exploiting or algorithmic weaknesses here. The best tactic is to rein in shots from all angles and ranges and try all sorts of different approaches. In fact, it's just like the real thing. And if there's one thing that makes sensible soccer stand out from the crowd, it's that, from the first kick to the end of the penalty shootout, this feels like real football. Not like some crazy pinball game of a dull slog up and down the middle of the park. I never again found a sports game that ever matched sensible soccer for sheer fun and playability. But in 1994, International Sensible Soccer was released. I remember this year very well. The World Cup tournament was featured in full and you can adjust which 24 teams this features. A particularly crucial feature for English and French fans as their nations failed to qualify. Ah well, Ireland were there and I still remember that stonker of a goal against Italy. Ah, those were the days. Also by now, a small rival game had been released. Its name, FIFA International Soccer. I'm not going to lie, I also had this on my Mega Drive and it was a lot of fun at the time, but it still wasn't a patch on Sensi. Still isn't. If a particular team isn't there, you can make up your own. Everything is fully changeable. The players and managers names, the players skin colour and, of course, you can change the team kit. Whether you just want to play in all black to confuse the ref or you want to play in a combination of pink and yellow and put off the opposition, the choice is yours. And then, there was Sensible World of Soccer. The anticipation was even greater than Christmas for me. And when it finally came and the goal-scoring superstar hero song started playing after loading the game, I think a little bit of Wii came out. Sung by Jackie Reed with a great little commentary snippet by John Motson. So, what has changed? How could the sensible team come up with anything finer than the last upgrade, which introduced a man in black producing red and yellow cards? Well, for starters, there is now a stadium with colour-coordinated crowds behind each goal. This improves the atmosphere immeasurably urging you to bulge the onion bag in the full knowledge that the gathered throng packed behind the net are your supporters. Add the press photographers and police and it's just like watching real football in a real ground with real little men and uh, no, you can't smell the hot dogs. Sensible World of Soccer, swaz from now on, has a deal more to offer than mere finery. The management option sees to this. Now, instead of just playing leagues, cups and friendlies, you can have a career managing or playing for and managing your favourite team. The number of teams you can boss is quite unbelievable. Choose any club in the world and chances are it'll be here. Whether it be Italy's AC Milan, New Zealand's Central Region Outfit, Waterside Karori or Ghanaian Greats Hearts of Orc. Staggering. And to cap it all, the players all had real names and values for their time, though some of the stats for some of them are open to debate. So you're looking at more than 1,500 teams and 26,000 players. Massive. Now this might seem a tad on the trivial side, but to hear what sounds like a fully packed San Siro stadium during an AC vs Inter Milan derby really adds to the game especially back in 94, when I'd never experienced anything like this in my life. I mean, come on, 
My last best footy game before this was Gary Lineker's Superstar Soccer. Every experienced sensible player can find the keeper's weaknesses, but they've gotten some quite severe tweaking. Nor dashing to the edge of the box and blithely ramming the ball into the corner, nor rushing diagonally into the area and swerving the ball past the hapless chap. They've wised up. Quick, short passing movements in the penalty area can unlock the defence, or you might try dribbling past the keeper. The keepers are graded, so it's easier to beat the bloke at Accrington Stanley than at Liverpool. Is it not a milk? When I grow up, I want to be good enough to play for Accrington Stanley. Accrington Stanley? Who are they? Exactly. Whatever. It's tougher all round to score goals. So, is Sensible World of Soccer the perfect all-rounder? Is it a game that effectively makes all other arcade and management games redundant? Well, yes and no. It is the finest arcade football game, probably on any platform. Forget the pretenders. This is the one. Okay, you might still find room in your hearts for Empire Soccer. Fans of the management genre might be put off by the lack of stats, but Swaz concentrates on the football side of managing rather than the business areas. No worries about what's going on on the advertising hoardings here. Sensible World of Soccer is every bit as good as I anticipated it would be all the way back in the day. As an arcade game, it improved on the previous incarnations, and the management side is enormous fun to play. It's way better than any other football game ever. And Swaz is as good an Amiga game as you can get. A landmark software title that once again shows the pedigree of sensible software and of course, the Commodore Amiga. Hit the like button if you agree with this. I'm sure you all will. What a corker of a game, eh? Thanks for watching this video, guys. I'd love to hear your experiences with this game in the comments. I'm sure many of you love this game also and it's right up there with one of my favourite games of all time. How about you? Also, if you please consider subscribing to the channel, that would be massively appreciated, and I've recently started a Patreon account to those wanting to show support. It will definitely make a massive difference. So, let's once again dig even deeper into the catalogue of absolutely fantastic games in another video coming up after this. And... I hope to see you all there. Thanks again for watching, and until the next one, bye for now.